Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Welcome back to another Pro Wrestling Talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. My name is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, AEW All Out 2023 is officially in the books. And I just wanted to go on here, give my review. I have to say, this card turned out to be better than I thought it was going to be. I got to keep it real. It turned out to be better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, I know they definitely added some last minute matches and, you know, that's cool and all. But, you know, I wish they would do better timing wise. But still, card ended up being pretty solid. And I felt like it ended up adding up to the $50. So, got to give them credit on that. But, anyway, AEW All Out 2023 took place last night, September 3rd, at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we, had, we had three pre-show matches. Let's see. We had five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we had nine main card matches and three pre-show matches. So pretty, ended up being a pretty stacked card. But let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the pre-show. All right, here we go. So this, so the zero hour pre-show started off with an over-budget charity battle royale where the winner and sole survivor of the battle royal will be able to uh, donate $50,000, uh, I guess pretty much of Tony Khan's money, $50,000 to the charity of their choice. So, hey, give it back to charity. I can dig it. I can dig it. So, pretty cool stipulation there. Um, there was a lot of folks in this match, but I'll pretty much just go uh, share the order of eliminations. I'm going to share the order of eliminations. Uh, started off pretty funny with Tony Nese trying to get everybody to do a group session workout, and nobody was, nobody was feeling that. But... Here are the order of eliminations. Tony Nice was the first one to get eliminated. Then Serpentico. Then Sean Spears. Then Commander. Then, um, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Angelo Parker. Man, I forgot. I keep forgetting what they, what they call, what they call him. Um, then Dal Dalton Castle was eliminated. Then Darius Martin. Then Chuck Taylor. Then Bishop Khan. Then Daddy Magic Matt Menard. Then Jake Hager. Then Mark Davis of Ozzy Open. Then Daniel Garcia, who even did the dance on the way back up the ramp. Then Scorpio Sky. Good to see Scorpio Sky back. Then Action Andretti. Then Kyle Fletcher, then Trent Barretta, then Toa Leona, and then Brian Cage was the last elimination and the last man standing to win this over the budget charity battle royal was Hangman Adam Page. Uh, he was the last one to to enter, which you know they had everybody in there all at once before they started, but he wins and it's the sole survivor and it was said that the fifty thousand dollar donation uh he decided that the charity selected is the chicago public education fund so that was the the charity that hangman adam page chose for the fifty thousand dollars to be donated to so Shout out to the Chicago Public Education Fund. And, uh, yeah, good move there, Tony Khan. Good move. Always good to, you know, 
be able to donate to charity and, you know, $50,000. Not bad at all. Good stuff. Alrighty, let's go to our next zero hour match, which showcases the ladies. Alrighty, so we had ourselves a trios match with the ladies of AEW. On one team, we had the ROH Women's World Champion Athena with Mercedes Martinez and Diamante taking on the trio of Hikaru Shida, Willow Nightingale, and Chicago's own Sky Blue. Uh, this was a pretty good match. Uh, definitely noticed that Athena did not like her tag team partners at all. Like, they couldn't get along. She kept arguing with them and just, you know, I guess she was trying to be the leader of the team and they weren't buying that. So it really showed in how this match went with this team. I mean, it was still a pretty good match, but you could tell Athena was really just in this for herself. And she had uh, Billy Starks kind of accompany her to the ring as well, which, you know, they kind of have a thing going right now. But uh, this, was a, this was a pretty decent match. But I had a feeling with the way that uh, the finish went, it was a pretty understandable finish. But... Sky Blue, the Chicago, Chicago native Sky Blue picked up the victory for her team after she pinned Diamante with a Code Blue. So got her with the Code Blue. And the hometown girl, Sky Blue, reigned supreme with her partners Hikaru Shida and Willow Nightingale. So good stuff there. Good stuff. Okay. And then the final zero hour match for All Out came down to this first title match. We had the AEW World Trios Championships on the line as the champs, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn, defend against Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, and Jay Lethal. Uh, of course, Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh, and, Je and Jeff Jarrett had the special sort of like NBA starting lineup sort of entrance, of course, provided by Sanjay Dutt on the mic. Uh, and of course, Dennis Rodman accompanied the Acclaim and Billy Gunn for, um, for this match. But overall, pretty decent match. I mean, there was definitely involvement from Sanjay Dutt. Karen Jarrett. Not only that, they swapped out referees. And Aubrey, Aubrey Edwards was the referee for this match. Of course, you know, her and Karen Jarrett have had beef. But overall, this was this was a pretty entertaining match. And even Dennis Rodman got the opportunity to um, hit, I believe it was Satnam Singh, with the with the guitar if I remember correctly um, and then pretty much they were able to finish off Jay Lethal uh, Matt's caster got the pin on Jay Lethal after hitting him with the mic drop and uh, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn retain the AEW World's Trios Championships not surprised there but um yeah, so the the era of the acclaimed and Billy Gunn as trios champions definitely has gotten off to a hot start, and just like that, they already have their first defense under their belts. So, good stuff, really good stuff there. Okay, before we transition to the main card, here's a quick word on the sponsor for this video, Game Beauty. As you continue to watch and enjoy Blitzball Champ gaming content here on the U to the Tube, be sure you take a moment to check out the link to the description for Game Beauty. Game Beauty offers a variety of video game themed makeup and cosmetic products. They offer items such as eyeshadow palettes,
Elemental Pearl Highlighters. Eyeshadow Brushes. And even non-makeup items such as these graphic t-shirts. They also have collaboration items like this Persona 5 Royal Limited Edition makeup collection, as you can see here, which you can get it as a full collection, or you can get different bundles of this collection, as well as different pieces separately. Also, Game Beauty offers free domestic and international shipping to most countries for orders over $60. And be sure to use the promo code BLITZBALL underscore CHAMP, all in caps, and you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to take advantage of that nice little discount. And now, back to our regularly scheduled video. Enjoy. Alrighty, let's go ahead and run down the main card for AEW All Out. Starting off with the ROH World Tag Team Championships on the line. As the champs, better than you, Bay Bay, make their first defense against the Dark Orders, John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Now, of course, it's plain and clear that Dark Order are heels now. Um, as far as the match, like I said, I'm not really a, a big fan of MJF and Adam Cole as a tag team. So this match was already a turnoff in that aspect. Um, MJF, you know, kind of tweaked his neck, you know, had a, had a bump on his neck and was taken out temporarily, but eventually came back, did eventually come back and help finish out the match. And shoot, even Adam Cole got hit with their with their own double clothesline. Of course, John Silver, Adam, Alex Reynolds hit a double clothesline on Adam Cole. But I mean, yeah, just MJF eventually came back was able to continue, was holding his neck quite a bit, but was able to string together offense. And then, you know, all's well ended well as uh, Adam Cole pinned Alex Reynolds after both him and, and MJF hit a double clothesline. Yeah, le legit a double clothesline. That's their tag team finisher. So freaking stupid. But... They retained the ROH World Tag Team Championships. Uh, not surprised there, but just, I'm not a fan of the fact that they're a tag team and they're the champs. So, I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to just leave it at that. Okay. Next up. We had the ROH World Television Championship on the line. As the champion, Samoa Joe defends against Shane Taylor. I have to say, I really enjoyed this match. I mean, these two big behemoths going at it. I mean, trading shots and just showcasing their power. You know, the power behind their strikes and just... It was definitely an on-point match between these two. Uh... Definitely enjoyed it. It was a really, really solid match. Um, also, I had to, uh, <laughs> I got to mention before this match started, Samoa Joe came to the ring as MJF was going up the ramp, and Samoa Joe gave him the shove. He gave him the shove on his way down the ramp. And, of course, MJF didn't take kindly to that, so he uh, came in. And, you know, attack Samoa Joe, you know, for it. But, you know, that didn't really go too well for him. But, yeah, 
I like how they did the callback to um, Samoa Joe and the WWE where they had uh, him walk out with the security guards and he shoved one of the security guards out the way, which was MJF at the time. So I like how they did that callback. That was really cool. That was really cool. But as far as the match, great solid match. Both these guys back and forth showcasing their power. But the Samoan submission machine would not be denied as he was able to submit Big Shane Taylor with the Coquina Clutch. Got the tap out victory. Samoa Joe, still your ROH World Television Champion. And he only has, he has less than 60 days. I think he's probably at like at 58 or 59 days um, left in order to surpass and break Jay Lethal's record for longest reigning ROH World Television Champion. Which I'm pretty sure he's going to break the record. I'm pretty sure he's going to break the record. But, but yeah, good solid match. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Next up, I gotta be honest with you. I really wasn't feeling this match. We had the TNT Championship on the line as the champion, well, supposed to be Luchasaurus, even though Christian's been holding on to the belt. Luchasaurus defending against Darby Allen. I mean, in all honesty, I just, I know Nick Wayne was with Darby Allen, but I mean, honestly, just, it really wasn't a match that I was interested in, to be honest with y'all. So, I can't say that I really enjoyed the effects of this match, aside from Darby Allen just taking crazy punishment and getting busted open, but um, Luchasaurus retains after pinning Darby Allen after hitting him with a lariat to the back of his head for the most part but honestly it, was, it wasn't really a match that I enjoyed because it wasn't a match that I was really interested in I just got to keep it real with y'all but Luchasaurus is still your champ but yeah it was a meh meh kind of match okay next up All right, we had another battle between big behemoths. This time we had a singles match. Powerhouse Hobbs versus the Redeemer, Miro. Now, this was a solid match. This was definitely a solid match between both these big behemoths showcasing their power and uh, agility as well. Um, definitely went back and forth. I felt like there was a decent amount of buildup to this match. You know, pretty decent amount. Pardon me. But it was a solid match. Definitely back and forth. But it took a second try. But Miro was able to eventually lock in the game over Camel Clutch and submit Powerhouse Hobbs uh, to pick up the victory. So Miro is your winner. There was a nice sign of sportsmanship at the end. You know, a little handshake between the two, but as soon as Miro turned his back, bam, Powerhouse Hobbs lays him out, starts beating him down, and then all of a sudden, CJ Perry, Miro's wife, formerly known as Lana, back in WWE, comes out to help, hits Powerhouse Hobbs with a chair, you know, a couple of chair shots, and while his attention was on her, Miro was able to grab the chair, knock out Powerhouse Hobbs. And then you would think there would be quite an interaction between the two, but Miro left the ring and kept saying, no, you're not real. You're not real. Interesting, you know, because that is, that is his real life wife. But interesting. Not sure how they're going to play that up going forward, but CJ Perry has finally made it to AEW. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but that was kind of a kind of a weird ending 
to that match. Or, you know, po after that match. So, yeah, it was, it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. Okay. Next up, back to the ladies. We had the TBS Championship on the line. As the champion, Chris Statlander defends against Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho. A uh, pretty decent match between both these ladies. I like both these ladies. I've met both these ladies. They're really cool. Um, Definitely could have gone either way with how this match was going. Of course, Soraya was in the corner for Ruby Soho. Um, Quite an interesting ending. A very interesting ending. So Ruby Soho uh, was looking to get the spray can to use on Chris Statlander. And then out from the ring, under the ring, is Tony Storm kind of looking like Marilyn Monroe in a red robe. And she comes out and steals the spray can and just kind of, uh, uh, with it. Pretty much provides the distraction necessary. Um, and Chris Statler, Chris Statlander was able to take advantage and was able to hit and pin Ruby Soho with the Sunday Night Fever to retain the TBS championship. So I was under the impression that the whole group was just done, but it looks like Tony Storm is out of the outcast. So it looks like it's just uh, Soraya and Ruby Soho. So that kind of cleared that up with the way that match ended. So... But it was a pretty decent match. Okay. Next up, let's see. Uh, where's, it, where's it at? I know I have the graphic for this. I'm pretty sure I have the graphic for this. Maybe I don't have the graphic for this. Oh, I actually don't have the graphic for this. Okay. No problem. I thought I did. Yeah, I thought I did. So, I don't have the graphic for this one, but we had a strap match. We had a strap match between Absolute Ricky Starks and the American Dragon Brian Danielson. And Ricky the Dragon Steamboat joined in as a special guest on commentary. I have to say, uh, Ricky Starks got off to the to a quick start early um of course beating down brian danielson before they even put the the strap on their wrists so he got the upper hand early and then you know just went back and forth whipping each other with the strap choking each other with the strap there's even a segment where um ricky the dragon steamboat got in a punch and a chop on uh ricky starks outside the the ring but, man, they were just tearing each other up with those with that strap. I mean, just the whipping, the lashes, all that. Just, it was all there. Um, both Brian Danielson and uh, Ricky Starks got bloodied up. And it was just, it was brutal. It was definitely a brutal match. But when it was all said and done, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, was able to take out Ricky Starks and then make him pass out, locking him in with the LaBelle lock with the strap, choking him to the point where he passed out. He didn't tap out. He passed out. Therefore, the referee called for the bell. Brian Danielson is your winner of the strap match. Uh, definitely a brutal, brutal match. Both. Both guys tore each other up, and it was solid. It was really, really solid. So, definitely a great match. Really, really great match. All right, let's keep it going. All right, next up, we had this special tag team match. One team, we had the NJPW Strong Openweight Champion, Eddie Kingston, and the ROH Pure Champion, Katsuyori Shibata, 
taking on Blackpool Combat Club's ROH World Champion Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. Now, I definitely enjoyed this match. Of course, you know, I love Shibata. Always wa enjoyed watching him work. I'll say this, a great solid match between both teams, but a craptacular finish. I mean, such a crappy finish. Yeah, I was I was really bummed with this finish. But pretty much Claudio pins Eddie Kingston after taking him out with one European uppercut. He just catches him and hits one European uppercut, pins him for the one, two, three. I was like, really? Not even a giant swing, not even a Ricola bomb, just one European uppercut. Bam, that was it. So, I don't know. I just, I really didn't like that finish. I didn't like that finish. But things definitely aren't over between Claudio and uh, Eddie Kingston. They need, they need a, they need a singles match. They definitely need a showdown with each other. Maybe something like a, a Last Man Standing or an Iron Man match. Something, something. But they need to, they need to settle that. They definitely need to settle that. Alrighty. Next up, had pretty much my favorite match of the card. Singles match. Kenny Omega versus Konosuke Takeshita. Of course, he was accompanied by Turkey Neck, Don Callis. Solid match. My favorite of the whole entire show. And it definitely delivered. I mean, both these guys know each other well. A great clash of styles. And just really went back and forth. But, of course, Takeshita, which, you know, he had some help with uh, Don Callis there and whatnot. But was eventually able to hit one final devastating running, running knee strike on uh, Kenny Omega. And then was able to pin him for the one, two, three. So that is twice now. Twice now recently that Takeshita has pinned Kenny Omega. Once in a um, eight-man tag. And then once again in a singles match. So, I don't know. Seems that Takeshita has Omega's number right now. Definitely seems that way. But, excellent match. Excellent match. Okay, next up. We had an eight-man tag team match. We had the team of FTR and the Young Bucks. Going up against Bullet Club Gold. Yeah. Um, this was a enjoyable match as well. It was also good to see the the chemistry that the Young Bucks and FTR had with each other. You know, both kind of sharing uh, similar moves and stuff like that. And, you know, it definitely showed. Definitely really showed. But Bullet Club Gold ended up reigning supreme last night. But it was a great, solid match. Um... Jay White, Switchblade Jay White, was able to hit Cash Wheeler with a Blade Runner. And Colton Gunn was able to make the cover for the 1-2-3 for, for Bullet Club Gold to pick up the victory. And then afterwards, it looks like there was a little bit of bickering back and forth between the Young Bucks and the FTR. But it looks like it didn't turn into anything crazy like them attacking each other or anything like that. So, eh... Eh, kind of weird. I would have thought that it would turn into some, you know, bickering and brawling, but didn't exactly go down like that. So, it is what it is. And then the main event. The main event of AEW All Out. 
We had the AEW International Championship on the line as the champion. Orange Cassidy, somebody you normally don't see in the main event. And this was his big moment. Defending against Blackpool Combat Club's John Moxley. I'm going to say this. This was an excellent match. But I just, I, a part of me feels like John Moxley is a little overpowered because lately he's been kicking out of everything. I mean, everything. Because if I remember correctly, he hasn't lost a singles match since, since I think, Revolution, where it had the, the, the death match with Hangman. Yeah, I think that's the last time he's lost in a singles match. But Mox has not lost since then. He's not been pinned since then. So, this was a solid match. Definitely main event worthy, for sure. And Orange Cassidy showed a lot of heart. I mean, a whole bunch of orange punches, a beach break or two, and just was hitting Mox with everything and taking everything from Mox. I mean, he even kicked out of a, a Death Rider. You know, was even able to escape a bulldog choke. So it definitely showed he was a lot of fighting spirit. A lot of fighting spirit. But when it came down to it, it took one last Death Rider to put away Orange Cassidy for the one, two, three. And John Moxley is your new international AEW international champion. So I'll ask y'all this. Do y'all think Mox needed this belt? Personally, I, I really don't think he needed this belt. I mean, he's a three-time AEW world champion, but... Uh, I guess they had to have some sort of big name to throw in Orange Cassidy, and they went with John Moxley. I I don't agree that he, he should have been the one, but it's John Moxley. So, But... You know, he had a good run. 31 successful defenses, lost it on the 32nd defense. I mean, Orange Cassidy had an incredible run. He had an incredible run, so no shame there. But I felt I felt like it was a matter of time before he finally lost. So, But yeah, that is AEW All Out in the books. Like I said, this turned out to be a much better show than I thought it was going to be. So got to give them credit but anyway that'll do it for this video don't forget to check out the link in the description for game beauty and also let me know what your thoughts are on the on the show what you think of the show what you think of the card what you think of the outcomes let me know what your thoughts were and don't forget to like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell while you're at it thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video for another pro wrestling talk Brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. My name is Jason Ingram. Happy Labor Day once again. Hope everybody enjoys their day. Take care. God bless. Peace.